So hello everyone, my name is Dmitry and I'm a contributor to the LIDA DAO working on the community staging module development. Today, I would like to update you on the current progress in the community staging module development. So without further ado, let's get started. Just yesterday, community staging contributors published a document called CSM Architecture. You can find it by scanning the QR code on the screen. And we actually can stop here because everything needed is in the document. But I know that most of you are super busy and don't have much time to read through the whole doc. So let me give you the gist. CSM is a permissionless staking module aimed at attracting community stakers to participate in the LIDO on Ethereum protocol as node operators. The only requirement to join CSM as a node operator is to be able to run validators and supply a bond. The stake is allocated to the validator keys in the order in which the keys are provided, given the keys are valid for sure. The bond itself is not directly associated with the actual validator's stake, but instead treated as a security collateral, independent security collateral. The bond is a property of a node operator. Hence, it is a collateral for all node operators, validators, and not only single one or individual one. This allows for the bond reduction. The more validators the node operator has, the less the bond for a single validator. Node operators get their rewards from the bond rebase, because it is STE and from the node operators portion of the staking rewards acquired by the protocol validators. Node operators portion of the staking rewards is socialized or averaged, if you prefer, if its validators perform above the threshold. If validators perform below the threshold, then no node operators rewards. However, bond rebase is still here. Accumulated consensus layer penalties resulting in a balance reduction below the deposit balance and any stolen EL rewards are confiscated from the node operator's bond. Node operators should follow exit, <clears throat> should exit validators upon protocol request or they can exit voluntarily. And that was the gist of CSM architecture. If you want to learn more, again, make sure to read the whole document and uh, ask your questions, leave your comments. It is very, very important for us. And speaking of further steps, me and my team will incorporate feedback from you guys, from all the community and other LIDO contributors into the document. And then we will proceed with the development of the actual module code. It was a great pleasure for me to share CSM updates with you. Thanks for having me here. Um, thanks, Dimitri. That was that was really fast, actually. Um, one one thing I didn't find in the presentation or the, the architecture documents are the because you have these these graphs with the bond sizes and the curves, but there's no actual numbers there. Are they still to be determined, or is there a reason for omitting those? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, yes, there is there is definitely a reason for numbers, and I've been asked multiple times about it, and even in the Rocket Pool Discord, guys are discussing this question. The reason is pretty simple. You all know how fast the roadmap of Ethereum and the actual updates to be included in the upcoming hard, hard fork changes. And uh, most of them, they have different different levels of effect on the actual considerations on the actual risk profile for the node operators and specifically for the operators within liquid staking protocols so given that the research itself takes a lot of time and uh, our last research provided by one of lighter contributors namely max done uh, at the at the at the middle of the previous year is already outdated we are not focusing on uh, this specific numbers yet because it, it, it is a long road to, to the mainnet uh, still to be done. So I, I think that uh, this numbers would be proposed to the DAO based on a dedicated research closer to the mainnet launch. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, like another thing I was personally wondering about, um, 
we, you mentioned triggerable exits, and I know those were necessary for starting up this module, but um, it doesn't seem that we're using them or only in an ultimate case. I forgot what the wording was. So why aren't we using tri triggerable uh, exits, but but relying on manual exits after a, like a, a protocol request? Yeah, that, 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 that's also a great question. As you all know, from the EAP 7002 proposal, at the moment, there is a cost and for, for triggering exits, and this cost increases exponentially depending on the actual number of exits requests within a block and within the previous blocks. So triggerable exits is a crucial feature for the, for the module security. So if a uh, node operator, for some reason, participate in a malicious way or in an inappropriate way, it definitely should be triggered. However, if the exit itself is required, for example, to fulfill STE withdrawals, the cheapest way and the most comfortable way here is not to rely on triggerable exits from the very beginning, but first to ask node operator to voluntarily exit his validator from the consensus layer because it is free of charge. Any, any validator can publish exit message and it will cost him nothing. So it is assumed that for CSM, the mechanism of exit requests will be the same as for the curated module. So the exits might be requested by the exit bus oracle, and then node operators should follow this exit. But if, for example, they, will, they would refuse to follow this exit, or there is another extraordinary reason to forcefully exit validator, only in this case, triggerable exits will be involved. Cool, thanks. Yeah, that, that, that does make sense. I didn't realize there were costs, um, non-negligent costs uh, associated with triggerable exits. Um, yeah, cool. The, this performance threshold, um, like as a solo node operator, that, that would be, that kind of looks intimidating to be honest. Like what, what happens if you're below the threshold, if, you, if you're not performing above this, this uh, threshold? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let let me elaborate a bit on this topic. So the performance threshold itself is associated with the performance oracle, and as I've mentioned during my super blazing fast uh, talk, this uh, performance oracle itself and the performance threshold, they are all about only uh, staking rewards part. So basically commissions for the validators. However, the collateral itself, the bond. Uh, provided in STE and STE is, irreba is irreplaceable token would still be here even if the validator for some reason performs below the threshold. So for sure, performing below the threshold for a long time it is not a desirable situation for the module. So in case of very long performance below the threshold, there might be some measures applied. However, if for a short period of time, let's say a month. For some reason, your validators has not been performing well and you dropped below the threshold. Even in this case, your rewards would still be higher than in the same case for the solo staker. Because think of it, the STE free base is socialized across the whole protocol. And it is most likely that if it is your individual issue, then the rest of the protocol would still perform well and STE through base wouldn't be affected that much. It means that you will still get this 90% of rewards, like basic rewards for STE for your collateral. And if you compare it to the solo stakers rewards in the same case, and there's actually a Google sheet attached to the architecture document with, uh, with examples of the calculations, your rewards would still be higher because as a solo staker, if your performance drops below some, let's say 90% of effectiveness, it would mean that you are not only getting less rewards, but you are also acquiring penalties. And in this case, even in this case, CSM rewards only from the bond rebase would still be higher than with the traditional solo staking. So I don't think that it's a major issue. And I would say that if you, for some reason, you've dropped just below the threshold, like a couple percents below, you would still 
get the same or like a little bit more rewards than in case of solo staking. But if you are performing above the threshold, you get these premium rewards for running validator with CSM. That's really cool. Um, I've noticed there's a lot more questions about this. Um, you've posted the link to uh, HackMD, but I understand if people want to discuss this, they can just tag you in the Rocket Pool channel or on the Lido one. If they yeah, yeah. That correct? Whenever they like, I'm, I check Rocket Pool Discord from time to time. I'm always in Lido Discord. So guys, feel free to tag me in any public chat and I will do my best. And um, my teammates will also do their best to answer on any questions. Feel free to ask questions in the re on the research forum within the document itself in any other place, because as I've mentioned multiple times, community feedback is by far the most valuable thing that we can get during development. And I really, really, really want to get as many questions as possible to be able to make CSM indeed one of the best or probably the best ever permissionless staking solution. Yeah, that that's great. I would I would joking around about Rocket Pool, but these guys have some really great input. That they have a really good view about these things, so it's really valuable that they've they've even opened a thread. I think about it, so it's uh, I think that's amazing. That's really cool. Yeah, that, that that's that's definitely amazing. And the thank huge thanks for Rocket Pool community. Again, their feedback is always valuable. And uh, re while reading their thread. I've already made some uh, small corrections to the document, not in terms of the meaning, but in terms of explanations. And this thing about performance threshold and these calculations was added right after their comments. So huge thanks for the Rocket Pool community. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Dimitri, um, for the presentation.